reindustrialization package, but also we know that about 200 million naira has been set aside in an intervention fund. Are all of these things working? Well, yes, actually. Um, I think what you're seeing now is the government here in Nigeria taking a really concerted effort to help to solve some of the underlying structural challenges that are inhibiting the growth of the sector and will really position Nigeria to be that leading export-oriented right. agricultural economy in the near future. Let's talk about the challenges that face farming in Nigeria in general. Mechanized farming would, would be essentially what reindustrialization means, and yet we know that 79% of Nigerian farmers, particularly in rural areas, face huge infrastructure constraints. That's within the broader context of power outages and roads being uh, weakly paved and that kind of thing in Nigeria. Now, I think uh, definitely Nigeria does face some certain infrastructure challenges. Um, however, I think one thing to really recognize is the fact that there are multiple models of industrialization. Um, and if you look at key economies such as you know, Thailand, Brazil, so on and so forth, that have been able to achieve incredible growth in the sector while still maintaining a uh, high component of their population still engaged in agriculture. You know, look at Thailand today, right. you know, over 40% of its population is still engaged in agriculture. It's a major agricultural exporter, exporting over 30 million metric tons of agricultural produce, almost $40 billion worth of production. Mm -hmm. And their approach to, um, to agriculture industrialization has recognized that, you know, since you have such a large component of your workforce engaged in agriculture in Nigeria, it's anywhere from mm. you know, 55 to 65 percent of the population. You, industrialization is a process that has to be done carefully, recognizing that you still can engage your, uh, mm. your workforce and create growth simultaneously. Right. Kola, let's talk about credit schemes for farmers in countries like Malawi and Ethiopia. We've seen successful implementation of farm subsidies, particularly key inputs like fertilizer. Nigeria's dabbled with the idea of subsidies, but apparently it hasn't worked well. Why is that? Well, uh, Nigeria's uh, primary agricultural subsidy has typically been a fertilizer input subsidy. Um, now, the traditional method of utilizing this subsidy has been a direct process where the farmer, where the government actually purchases from fertilizer manufacturers or importers and then distributes. Um, the country has actually in the last couple of years, uh, in certain parts of the country, innovated with more of a market-based approach, utilizing agricultural vouchers mm -hmm. uh, similar to uh, Malawi, uh, where farmers can, like any supermarket in the world, uh, go into a store with a voucher and cash and be able to get a discount off a product. Right. Uh, these methods have worked and uh, it's demonstrated the country's willingness to uh, adapt and, and grow. Right. What's the role of banks in all of this? Because uh, we're told that, well, obviously with the recent banking reforms, banks have been loath to lend. But even in the good times, banks were very skeptical about land, uh, lending on land projects and agricultural projects in general. No, it's a, it's a critical challenge and banks are, are a very important part of the success of this story if it's going to happen. You know, you look at Nigeria today, uh, commercial lending to agriculture is about 1.4% of total commercial lending. You know, compare that with Brazil where it's 18%. Um, there's tremendous opportunity for improvement. And I think th with the steps that are being taken today uh, by the CBN in partnership with organizations like the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, mm -hmm. AGRA, you're seeing a holistic approach to solving these problems. Mm -hmm. And really it's you know, by tackling three key things. First, de-risking the sector. You know, second, institutionalizing the growth. And third, building the capacities within the financial service sector to successfully and sustainably lend to agriculture. De-risking the sector. For somebody watching right now, what does that mean? In a country like Zimbabwe, that would mean you have no land tenure. What does it mean in Nigeria? Well, in Nigeria, de-risking means two key things. Um, you know, there's, uh, a, there's really two types of risk in agricultural lending. There's perceived risk and real risk. 
So perceived risk, uh, to overcome that, the, uh, the program has put in place a risk sharing facility backed up with a technical assistance facility to really encourage banks to get into the sector, to be able to do the fundamental thing the banks do, be able to tell a good credit mm. from a bad credit. Mm. Um, and then the second thing is trying to handle the real risk associated with agriculture, be it pest, disease, drought, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, you know, only 500,000 uh, farmers in Nigeria today have access to insurance out of right. 14 million. Um, so it's really putting in a, a restructuring the entire agricultural insurance right. base so that the banks have protection against the real risks associated right. with agriculture. All right. Now, obviously, President Jonathan's very concerned about the fact that despite vast tracts of land, Nigeria continues to be a net importer of food. He's introducing a program for tariff barriers on key products like sugar and rice. But he wants to see basically Nigeria becoming a net producer and exporter of food. What's that going to mean? What does it involve by way of investment, by way of commercializing farming? Because you do have a lot of smallholders in Nigeria. Exactly. And the smallholder uh, farmer is still going to be a very integral part of, um, of the agriculture sector for the foreseeable future and does not in actually inhibit growth. As, you, as I've stated, you, know, you see mm. major mm. economies such as India, China, um, Thailand that have actually been uh, integrated the smallholder into the success story of becoming major exporters in agriculture. Um, so, you know, to answer your, your point, um, you know, the Nigerian agriculture sector has untold capabilities and possibilities. We have 79 million hectares of agricultural land, 23% of all the agricultural land in West Africa. We have you know, over 260 billion cubic uh, meters of water. It's about 21% of all the water available in the region. Um, the steps that need to be taken are not, uh, how do I say, uh, they are known. Um, if you look at countries such as uh, Thailand, as I've said, you have a scenario where you get the input markets working, get the innovation working, and in Nigeria you actually have seen this uh, working quite effectively. Mm -hmm. Today in Nigeria we are actually Africa's largest uh, producer of soybeans. That has been driven by the innovation that has been developed here in Nigeria by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, where you see soybean yields in Nigeria right. uh, at, uh, outpacing the world soybean yield growth by about fivefold. Right. So the, the, all the key components are there. The, the strategies are known. What we're seeing today with the CBN taking the lead is the steps necessary to execute these strategies right. to unlock the potential.